It's 1972. The American Psychiatric Association is convened for its annual meeting, accompanied by hundreds of protesters surrounding the building. A man wearing a poorly fitted Nixon mask and comically baggy suit takes the podium. This man, at the time known to the attendees only as Dr. H. Anonymous, was to make the most important speech in the association's 80 years of existence up to that point. The speech began with the simple words, I am a homosexual, I am a psychiatrist. He continued by arguing that homosexuality should be removed from the diagnostic manual, or DSM, of the psychiatric profession. The identity of Dr. H, real name John Fryer, was not revealed publicly until 13 years after he gave his speech. It is likely that he would have been fired from his job at Temple University if they had discovered he was gay. Fryer was brave to speak out, and his speech had the desired effect. One year after his speech, the call was heard. Years of protesting culminated to the moment when the American Psychiatric Association yielded to public pressure, removing homosexuality from the DSM in 1973. A second, nearly as important event occurred in the same year, when young Dr. Richard Isay completed his residency program at Yale. Isay thought like most other psychiatrists at the time who disregarded the 1973 change to the DSM and continued using the old method of attempting to cure homosexuality. The change to the DSM was viewed as unscientific with no basis in fact or reason. A mere political move to save face for the psychiatric profession, which had just come out of a period of harsh public criticism in the 1960s. Ironically, like Fryer, Isay was secretly gay. The young doctor believed that he would be able to get rid of his own homosexuality using psychoanalytic techniques, the same ones that other psychiatrists use to treat their patients. In pursuit of this goal, Isay married a woman and fathered two children. After 10 long years of trying, Isay realized that changing his sexual orientation was impossible. He continued his marriage for the sake of his children, but he embraced his sexuality after meeting his future lifelong partner, Gordon Harrell. Isay began teaching his gay patients to embrace their sexuality, just as he had learned to do. From his own experiences and the experiences of his patients, he learned that the only problems stemming from homosexuality were caused by those who attempted to change the people's sexual orientation. In 1989, he published his first book, Being Homosexual, Gay Men and Their Development. His book argued that homosexuality was an unchangeable variant in human sexuality. At the time, Isay's book was highly controversial, both within and outside of the field of psychiatry. However, it is now viewed as one of the most important books about homosexuality in the 20th century. While still closeted, Isay became a prominent gay rights activist in the years after he published his first book. An early supporter of gay marriage, he told the US News and World Report, when gay marriages and adoptions are possible and gay couples reap the same social benefits as heterosexual couples, I believe there will be a corresponding change in the behavior of gay men, with much less emphasis on the sexual act and more emphasis on relationships. This statement was made at a time when gay sex was still a crime in most states, and any discussion on same-sex marriage was rare. By 1992, Isay was leading the charge against discrimination in the psychiatric profession. That year, with the support of the American Civil Liberties Union, Isay threatened to sue the American Psychoanalytic Association for its discriminatory policies, which continued to prevent gays and lesbians from becoming psychiatrists. The threat of a lawsuit forced the association to end those policies, and it began grudgingly making reforms. As a member of the APA Committee on Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Issues, Isay spearheaded these efforts. The reforms to the American practice spread abroad, sparking reforms of the British psychiatric community and others. After the discriminatory policies were removed, Isay was finally able to out himself as gay. In a chapter of his second book, he revealed publicly his 10-year attempt to change his sexual orientation and become straight. In 1997, the Psychoanalytic Association became the first national mental health organization to support gay marriage, a policy long supported by Isay. 
Over time, these reforms to medical treatment of homosexuality directly led to changes in public perception and government policy. States gradually lifted sodomy laws, which banned gay sex. And in 2001, United States Surgeon General David Satcha declared that there is no valid scientific evidence that sexual orientation can be changed. Two years later, the Supreme Court invalidated all 14 remaining state laws banning homosexual intercourse. After that, a national movement formed to legalize same-sex marriage. After publishing his third book in 2006, Issei spoke out in support of same-sex marriage on popular television broadcasts, including Larry King Live and The Oprah Winfrey Show. Finally, after years of fighting for the right to marriage, Issei was wedded to his life partner, Gordon Harrell, in 2011. They were only married for a year when Issei died of cancer in 2012. Through the course of his life, Richard Issei was instrumental in reforming the medical community's views and behavior towards homosexuality. He was one of the earliest to argue that sexuality was a benign variation in human identity, impossible to change. He wrote three influential books, each of which moved gay rights efforts forward. Issei served on the boards and committees of many important psychoanalytic and gay rights organizations. During his time as member and chair of the APA Committee on Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Issues, he was responsible for helping to directly advance reform efforts to the profession of psychiatry. It is impossible to name another person who had as much of an impact on the way the field of medicine, and by extension the nation as a whole, has viewed lesbians, gays, and bisexuals during the 21st century.